Travis of Boss Tables here, showing you what to initially do when you get your WHC series table. This guy is a six by 12. Your slats will be in the machine like such. There will be a band holding all the slats down. You need to remove that band. First thing you wanna do is level your machine. So we build these machines, they have casters on them. There is a leveling foot that we put in here to help with adjustment for uneven floors. Now, after you get your machine leveled and unpackaged, you're gonna to wanna to fill it with water. We generally recommend filling it with water before you put the solution in, in case you overfill your table. How much water is full? This right here is a seven inch cavity. It is full when this seven inches is full. This is a five inch cutting area. So, that being said, your water is stored in here. To fill your table, you are simply going to take a hose lay it in the bed, and then fill the water. Now, you do need to have this valve open right here. This valve is what allows the air to displace, the water to displace the air, and it is full when this seven inches is full. You can check that by shining a light through the grate and then watching it slowly fill up. Upon that, it is very important that you put the solution in to stop rust, fungus, and bacteria. And the big thing is that you need to treat that table and it needs to be treated from here on and forever to stop your table from rusting out. So you've got your table leveled, you've got everything unpackaged, you've got the water in it. Now what? You need to essentially take the torch, plug it in the front of the power unit, and take this guy on a WHC series table. This is a yellow Cat5 cable. This Cat5 cable goes into our PWM2 module. This module plugs in to here. This Cat5 plugs into here, and this module then goes in the back of your power unit. That's the CPC port. This is what turns your machine on and off, gets a raw arc voltage out of it, and the arc OK signal. This is very important. You cannot run your machine without this. So, you've got that plugged in, and you're ready to turn it on. Make sure that, essentially, your emergency stop is not depressed. If these are pushed in, your machine will not come out of E-stop. Likewise, if this torch is not mounted on the machine, it will not come out of E-stop. Very important. There's another one on the other side, an E-stop switch, and there's an E-stop switch on the tape or on the computer stand. Now, what is this wire? What does this wire do? This wire essentially is a homing switch. There's a homing switch in here, and there's also a homing switch ran off of continuity. This runs much the same as an ohm meter. When this wire and the tip come down and sense steel, it sets home. You will have two configurations. You're gonna run this wire, this new steel or feather touch. The new series tables are labeled feather touch. If you're gonna run on steel that is rusty, powder coated, coated with any sort of membrane, uh, laser film, any of that, you need to be running rusty steel or no feather touch and not use a wire, just simply tuck it back and use the mechanical switch right here. And this will be how you're gonna set home on your machine. So we've got our torch on, we know what that wire is for. Our e-stop switches are not depressed. To turn your controller on, you're gonna hit this green button. When you turn, hit the green button, this light will come on, letting you know that your controller has power and that gives power to your motors and allows you to run the table. Now, that being said, another thing that we have a lot of questions on is essentially um, consumables. Consumables are very, very, very important, and it's very important that they're correctly used. So, in in the programming in SheCam, described on a later video, you're going to choose a tool, and that tool is derived off of these tips. There are 45, 65, and 85 amp tips. Now. Fine cut tips are also ran at 45 amps, but they're distinctively different. So, 
these part numbers are all called out and the assemblies are all called out right on the top of your power unit with a diagram to show you exactly how to assemble. But real quick, how do you assemble it? I take, got a barrel, my outer cone, screw them together. And this is, this is important too, I get a lot of questions on this. I then take my 45 amp tip, stick it in, take my electrode, stick that in as well, and then a swirl ring. This is not a fine cut swirl ring. Notice the double set of holes, stick that in there. This is a fine cut swirl ring. There is a big difference there. Now, how do you assemble a set of fine cut consumables? This is a shielded mount, assembles much the same. Like so, you then take a fine cut tip that looks like this, insert it, make sure it's in there, and again, this piece does not go here. That is not, this is bad. Don't ever do this. Put that on like so. Drop the tip in from the top, fits in there nicely. Then take an electrode, drop it in the top and the correct swirl ring. And there you have the difference. Fine cut versus normal consumables. This is lighter gauge sheet metal. This is anything, you know, you can run some light gauge sheet metal on as well, 16 gauge on up. Um, you know, and this, this part is the same till 105. So it's a big difference there. Other than that, I suppose, how do you fill your table full of water? Um, what you wanna do is you wanna have your air supplied right here. Close this valve, stick your airline in. This can be permanent. If you have a scribe, you will have a T coming down with another valve and that supplies air pressure to your scribe itself. Close this valve, close this valve, and when you want to fill it with water, you open this, the air will displace the water, pushing it on top. Be careful, don't let it overflow, because it will if you don't pay attention.